That first moment when a composer hears their music played back, for me, particularly in recent years, I'd say in the last decade, it's very much like the moment in The Wizard of Oz when Dorothy steps out of the house and you go from a black and white film to a color film. Because when I hear color in my own inner ear in the concert hall inside my head, it's always a slightly faded version of the, th of the true three-dimensional color that you actually hear in a hall. So it's always a little bit richer. There are moments where you're pleasantly surprised. There are other moments where you say, oh my God, did I do that? I've got to fix that. Uh, and then there are moments where you see the performer bringing something to the work that you yourself never really intended nor imagined, and you think, wow, that's nice. I'd like, I'd like to keep that one. And then you might actually ask them, what are you doing? And they'll tell you, and then you actually redo the score. Richard Daniel Porch, great, great person. And he was very also uh, flexible of letting me do some of my own ideas, bringing in com combination of the both. My first experience with Shaheen came as a result of my writing my second book of piano preludes, 17 years after I wrote my first book. Uh, a student of mine who was at the Manhattan School came to me, and often my students will come with a live performer showing me a work because and I've instilled that in them that, you know, what I'm, what, what I'm really interested in is hearing your work rather than looking at it and talking about it. So being one of the students who'd long since gotten that message, he brought in a pianist one day and said, I've got a piano piece I really want you to hear, and I've got a really great pianist playing it, so can we come over? And I said, sure. So he brought Shaheen, and I heard her play, and I said, where the hell did you come from? And she said, Shanghai. The first time I met him, I got the impression already that he is such a true um, musician, composer, because if you're with him, he talks about music all the time. I then said, I'd like at some point to discuss the possibility of my writing something for you. We really clicked right away, so then he said, would you like to do another piano concerto? He described is that it is already all in me. I just have to write it down uh, on the paper. Concerto is called A Hero's Journey. The third movement is like a celebration of finally the hero's journey is finished and uh, it's a success. It's almost like a tarantella. Uh, a tarantella is an Italian dance um, in 6 8. So it's 1 2 3 4 plus it. Bum, bum, bum. I mean, you can hear from the very beginning the timpani plays. The violins play. And the piano. Pa, pa, da, pa, pa, da, pa. Very exciting, very much fun. Uh, the piano has some very difficult octaves. Very tricky. I always had uh, a bit of difficulty in my left hand, and I described it to Mr. Daniel Poor, and he said, well, you didn't know, I'm lefty. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna tend to write everything for the left hand a little more <laughs> challenging. <laughs> and then Richard juxtaposes three against this pulse of two. In other words, he's laying The excitement of all of this and the octaves and the and the brilliant writing leads us to tempo two. This slower tempo. And what he does then is he has some quite beautiful chorale chords.
And then he brings us back to the angular tarantella. <laughs> After that, he has a little cadenza for the piano, starts with a bunch of trills. And then, boom, we're back in, three against two, Tarantella. And then he once again brings us, brings us back to this frenzied ending. A big flourish in the piano, and it's over.